Having now taking some photos in the summer sun. It's very bright and it can make for some slightly difficult situations for taking photos because you get that very high contrast, middle of the day, very bright sun, just difficult. It doesn't always make for the best photos. So we're gonna dive into Lyrum Classic and see what we can do with an otherwise reasonably dull looking photo in terms of light, in terms of stuff like that. We're gonna fix up a few things with framing, with exposure, maybe a bit of color. We're of course gonna use masks. Let's dive into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Let's dive in and let's take a look at editing this photo. Now, I don't hate it, right? Let's just take another new Sony RX1R3, which was fun to walk around with, actually. A nice sort of compact camera to take photos like this, 35mm f2. This was shot at, so we have got some nice kind of shallow depth of field in the foreground here. This kind of tower in the background is the focal point of the image, but there's a lot of sky here, which is a bit blown out. We probably don't need that much sky. It's not entirely straight either. So we, we need to do a little bit of work here. There's some exposure work, some masking. We wanna make this interesting. You know, let's dive in. Let's really get to work with this image. A lot of this is gonna come down to masking the exposure, I think. So the first thing we're gonna do actually, I think is, is fix the, the look of the photo in terms of the fact that it's not straight. So we're gonna come down on the right here to the transform tab. I'm actually gonna do this manually. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna use the rotate slider here just to rotate the photo like so. But I also want to just use the vertical transform slider here. And you can see if I move this left or right, we get an interesting effect. We're kind of tilting the, the entire photo as if it's kind of a 3D effect, right? So tilting it almost like this. And what this can do is, is bring, if I tilt it like this, we can almost bring the background a little bit almost towards us a touch or a little bit away from us, get more of that sort of foreground feel. So I'm actually gonna do something like this. I wanna make that, that background just feel a little bit more pulled towards us. And then, as you can see, we've now got all this area around the photo, which is not ideal. So we're gonna scale this whole thing up. Let's do something like this. So we're basically zooming in. And then the only other thing I need to do, I just wanna center this up actually. I'm gonna do something like this. I'm just affecting the X offset, maybe the Y would do something like that. I quite like that. So we've now got this sort of tower in the distance as the focal point of the image. We're framing it with these plants. We've got a lot of sky to deal with. So let's get to work with some of that. Now, the first thing we're going to do, I think here is actually come up and do some slight global edits. Nothing crazy, a little bit of a boost for the shadows. Highlights down a little bit as well. That's gonna affect the sky touch. A Little bit of contrast, little bit of clarity, bit of texture, little bit of vibrance, nothing too crazy. Maybe even a little bit of saturation as well. I wanna bring out some of the color in this foreground, which is quite nice. Don't need to affect the white balance, I don't think. Let's go ahead and affect the sky, I think, first of all. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and just do a straight sky mask. I'm actually gonna do a linear grid. I'm gonna bring that down like so. And then we'll right click on that mask and intersect mask with select sky. Now we've got a linear gradient only affecting the sky. And what I'm gonna do first and foremost is bring the dehaze up. That's gonna help bring out some of the details in the sky. I'm gonna come up, I'm actually gonna bring the exposure down a little bit as well. I'm gonna bring those black levels down, which hopefully will, will help bring out some of these bluer areas. Bring the whites up a little bit. Let's bring those highlights down just a touch and the contrast up. Something like that. So we've brought out a little bit more detail in the sky there, which is quite useful, but we definitely have more work to do with it. Let's go ahead and do another mask. This time we're gonna do a color range mask. This allows me to select a color in the photo. And what I'm gonna do with the eyedropper tool here is actually left click and drag to create a square over part of the image. Now you can see that it's then selected a huge amount of the image. So I'm gonna bring this refine slider down until we're mostly just affecting these parts of the sky. I quite like that. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the contrast up. Exposure down just a touch. Let's bring those black levels down a little bit. The whites up a touch as well. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Let's bring the saturation down a little bit on those blues. And then we're gonna come down. I'm actually gonna bring this dehaze up as well, but more locally to the blues of the image. Okay, that's, that's, looking, that's looking pretty decent actually. Do you know what? 
that looks okay. Let's work on some other parts of the image as well for now. So I'm going to bring a linear gradient up from the bottom. What this is going to do is help us to just darken this foreground a touch, which just pushes our viewer's eye into that middle of the photo, which is where we want it. I'm also going to go ahead and do a radial gradient across this middle and just brighten that a touch. Okay, so that actually looks quite nice. We've just brightened that area to make sure that is the kind of brighter area of the photo. We can come back and just, I'm going to lower the overall exposure of the photo, maybe a little bit of a bump in contrast as well. Nothing too crazy, but something like that. Let's go ahead and do another mask here. Let's do a linear gradient, which we're going to bring in from the top right, something like so. I want to feather that quite nicely. I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit. I'm going to come down. I'm actually going to bring the dehaze down a little bit. What we're doing here is kind of simulating the sunlight a little bit. I want to bring the highlights down because I just don't want to blow out things too much. But that looks quite good. I'm also going to subtract from this mask a linear gradient and bring this in for the foreground. Now, if I press O, I can see the overall what I'm actually doing here for the mask, right? Let's just hide this panel as well. So you can see it comes in feathered from the top right, but now we're just eliminating some of this foreground so that we're really just brightening this part of the image as if the, the light is sort of pouring in from, from over there, which I quite like. Okay, this is how the image looks at the moment. Let's look at a before and after. So this is where we started. You can see the framing is now quite different. The exposure is certainly quite different. We've really masked things out. But even the colors are a little bit different. Look at that. That's much, much nicer. I think we can actually come down here to the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. I'm just going to bring the orange down a little bit. I don't think it's going to affect too much, but we'll do something like that. The yellows as well. Now, the greens I want to push over towards a nice, rich, lush green. So I want to bring out the green in this kind of foreground area. And the blues, I'm going to come actually over to the saturation. I'm just going to bring the the, the actual saturation of blue down a little bit. The green up just a touch. Let's go over to luminance and bring the luminance of the blue down as well. Now, what we're getting there is a little bit of a, a almost like a, a circular polarizing filter effect to the sky, which I really quite like, actually. I think that that, that lends quite a, quite a nice look to this image. And I think, actually, in terms of what this looks like now compared to where we started... We've made quite a serious difference. Let's look at the before and after. So this is before, and this is after. Now, look, is this image winning awards? Probably not. But it's an, <laughs> but it's an interesting exercise to edit a photo like this. I, I really only had the opportunity to shoot in the midday sun. And actually, you know, I used to avoid it in the summer. But that feels like a waste of an opportunity. This is probably not the ideal place to shoot. I like to shoot in, you know, the forest is a great place. The city is a great place because you can actually find shaded areas. You can play with that contrast. That can be fantastic. This is very open to that harsh sunlight. But even so, you can't just ignore months of the year in the daytime just because the sun is out, right? It, it's still something you want to experiment with and play around with. And while this is not necessarily the kind of shot I would look to take in those conditions. Actually, I'm glad I've taken it and it's fun to then play around in the edit to see what you can actually do with it. And I always feel like with these edits, I learn so much about the types of photos that I want to take and how I can make things better in the future in camera in the moment. For example, in this one, I might actually have just level things. I might take the time to level things more while I was there with the camera so that I had a straight horizon. And I might actually have tilted the camera in a slightly different way. I might have held it in a different position and actually tilted it to try and tease that background towards me a little bit more. Obviously, I can do stuff in the edit, which is great, but I'd prefer to be able to do that in person, in camera, at the time. It's always better. The better you can get it in camera, the better situation you're creating for yourself when you come to the edit. Now, I'd love to know what you think. Do you shoot in the midday sun? Do you still go out this time of year in the middle of the day when that sun is beating down? And if so... What kind of photography are you shooting? Because I think that's really interesting, actually. And I'm always keen to know what people do this time of year because it, it just, you know what? It's very bright. It's very contrasty. So I'd love to know. Of course, you can check out the new Sony RX1 R3 by following a link down the description. I'll pop a link down there so you can check it out. Don't forget to like, subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.